Uh, my name is Ahmed Shahid. I'm the UN Special Rapporteur on Iran. Um, in my work, I have uh, noted the, with alarm the high rate of executions in Iran. And uh, of course, the first concern is the very large number of people who are put to death in, in, in Iran, uh, making it the second highest country in terms of total number and the highest uh, in terms of per capita uh, rate. The concerns are aggravated because often uh, people who are put to death uh, are done so for crimes that do not warrant uh, death penalty under international law. Although international law does not ban death penalty, it restricts that to the most serious uh, crimes. And Iran, however, our death penalty is uh, given in cases that do not meet the standards, such as, for example, if you have uh, been drinking alcohol, uh, uh, you know, I think up to three times, death penalty can be imposed. Uh, certain sexual offenses, um, including for same-sex uh, communities, carries um, uh, carry a death penalty, um, a a as is other uh, um, vaguely defined uh, offenses, including things like Muharraba, which is called enmity with God, uh, and so on. So the issue is that Iran has not only not limited death penalty to the uh, uh, the most grievous offenses, um, and the third concern uh, is that many of the trials, uh, which end up in producing uh, you know death sentences have been reported to be manifestly uh, not, not free and fair, uh, manifestly uh, unfair tri trials, uh, where the uh, defendants have complained of torture in terms of extracting confessions from them, uh, not being given uh, access to their counsel uh, in the administration stage, or, or proper opportunity for them to defend uh, in court, sometimes trials lasting uh, very, very short duration. So unfair trials, um, uh, capital crimes which don't meet uh, the most serious uh, offense standard, and a very large number of people put to death. These are the major concerns I have about uh, Iran's death penalty. Now, we know Iran is an active UN member state, but yet it has a difficult relationship with the international community. Um, what kind of reception do your reports and your recommendations get in Iran, and what kind of hope do you have of achieving changes in the situation there? Well, it's now about 30 years since the Islamic Republic have been going in Iran, and you see a generational change coming in the country. I have observed that my reports are read uh, widely uh, in Iran. Uh, there's a lot of, if you like, uh, interest in the reports of UN reporters on, on, on Iran, especially among the, amongst, amongst the young. Um, and for, for the, from the government's point of view, they also care about what's been said about their country, whether it's by UN reporters or other UN bodies, because Iran, unlike, say, North Korea, cares about world opinion of itself. Iran, for example, runs for UN elections. Uh, the Human Rights Council uh, is one body Iran would like to be elected to, and they have uh, been co contesting other uh, elections as well. And, and um, therefore, Iran seeks to have positive news about the country um, you know, communicated uh, everywhere. So it, it is concerned when the world is critical of what's happening in Iran. So I think that provides an avenue for engagement, as in the case of many other countries, when, when they feel that criticism uh, requires tactical engagement, or at least tactical concession to begin with, before which they will pro pro proceed towards, towards more prescriptive um, engagement on human rights norms. So I think international focus on, on Iran, international criticism of what, 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 what finds wrong in human rights violations will help Iran move towards embracing human rights values. And um, within the UN system, uh, we've got a number of agencies, for example, the UN Office on Drugs and Crimes, uh, which is very involved with, with Iran and supporting programs there to um, combat drug trafficking, for example. And here at the World Congress Against the Death Penalty, we have people encouraging um, members of the public to sign a petition calling on restrictions on such programs to help Iran combat drug trafficking because they result in executions. Um, do you think you can help the UN itself have a more coherent policy, um, for example, talking to UNODC uh, to help uh, the UN have a more coherent po policy on crime and on the death penalty? Yes, um, the UN has a policy of mainstreaming human rights, 
but it also has very fragmented, if you like, you know, um, way of implementing it because there are a number of agencies with different priorities all working in some way to promote human rights, whether it's UNDP, UNICEF, in this case UNODC as, as well. Um, but there have been a number of concerns raised about the Iran program, especially because, of, or, or particularly because in Iran's case about 80% of the executions are drug related. And in large number of these executions, that, that's not the result really of, of trafficking, but also of drugs possession. And um, many countries who fund this program, who are abolitionists, have, I think, um, been sensitive uh, to the outcome uh, in Iran in terms of its drug, Iran's own drug uh, 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 programs. I have been touching with you in on this subject. I, can, I hope to remain in further contact with them to see that, that their programs are totally insulated from Act to the government that contribute uh, to uh, to death penalty. Um, the UN has uh, a code of conduct which will not allow its agencies to be to, uh, to be linked to programs that would result in human rights violations.